How to target your ideal audience with Facebook ads in 2024. Today, I'll be going over the exact structure and strategy we use for targeting with Facebook ads that has absolutely crushed it with us for 2023. And we'll be continuing using this in 2024. So let's take a look at the new way. Um, the new way has allowed us to scale a men's clothing brand from $380,000 a month to $1.8 million per month. It's allowed us to scale a wall art brand from $130,000 a month to $1.1 million per month. It's allowed us to take a kid's sports ball brand from about $30,000 a month in about August 2022 to doing $6 million total in sales between November and December 2022. And it's also even allowed us to take a subscription mushroom supplement brand from 16 k a month to $395,000 a month. So that is the new way. And the old way of targeting is dead. And what is the old way? It's running interests, it's using lookalikes, it's using custom audiences. And what is wrong with interests, you may ask? Well, the biggest problem with interests is that people get labeled this after they already show intent with other brands. So give you an example, I just moved into my new house. Those of you all who follow the channel religiously, you know this is the new studio and everything. I just spent a lot of money, like $4,000 on wall art for the whole house. And when I was purchasing this wall art, I didn't start getting ads for wall art until I started visiting websites and even made my first purchase on other websites. Now, once I made these purchases, I started getting all these wall art ads because now all of a sudden, Facebook recognizes the fact that I'm interested in wall art. The problem with this is now, people are basically trying to hope I purchase again. And due to that, they're all just kind of picking all like competing against the same person. You know, I've already made my purchase. Now everyone's competing on me to purchase again. So you pay a lot more because now you're, you're competing with everyone else and you're paying for an audience. That's kind of like, you know, sloppy seconds in a way. So that's also one problem with interest. Now you could be like, well, Nick, you could target entrepreneurs and put the motivational wall art. Yeah, sure. Don't get me wrong, but you're also still kind of uh, paying that premium and competing with everyone else. And I also know a lot of entrepreneurs who rarely ever post entrepreneurship content and even like you know, talk about entrepreneurship stuff on Instagram, Facebook to where it would kind of put them in that entrepreneurship bucket. So, and I'll go over a second how we hit those people. Next one is lookalikes. Biggest problem with lookalikes is the size. Uh, the size of lookalikes is the biggest struggle with scaling in an account. Um, almost every account that we technically used lookalikes on, you know, we'd be capped at like $100 a day to $300 a day of ad spend before like our frequencies through the roof and we just, we can't scale past because the look like audience is like 2.1 million people. You can do like larger percentages, but again, just it's always an issue with that. And then the second thing is that Facebook already does this for you. What do I mean by that? If I optimized for purchases, what essentially happens is Facebook is going after people most likely to purchase from your brand. So Facebook's already kind of has its audience it's going after that's most likely to convert. You creating a lookalike audience is, you know, pretty much useless on purchases. And that's why I personally do not use them. Now, lastly is custom audiences. And the biggest problem with custom audiences is size again, and iOS 14.5. So used to, you know, you before I was 14.5, you had 100% certainty X, these X amount of people were in your custom audience. Whereas now due to iOS 14.5, there's a percentage of those people that cannot be targeted due to iOS 14.5. And then lastly is that Facebook already does retargeting for you. So it's no point of running dedicated retargeting in your account accounts. Now, what is this new way? What is this new way of targeting in 2024? And that is broad targeting that is running no look like audiences, no custom audiences, no interest, literally just age, gender, and location. So here's an example. This particular brand is a unisex brand, meaning they can serve either men or women. It doesn't really matter. We're targeting the United States because we want US customers. If you wanted Australian customers, you would target Australia. If you wanted male customers, because you knew from 100% certainty, like for example, we have run ads for a men's clothing brand, we would target men for the gender. Age, same thing. If you know for a hundred percent fact that like a certain age group buys from you, like maybe it's like 40 to 65 plus, then I would do that. I don't really mess with age too much because also too, Facebook's really good at serving ads in front of the right people. So age, I pretty much just leave. So I'm more focused on the location and the gender. And I do one campaign per country. So if, if I'm doing other countries, I would do other campaigns for that. Now, 
the benefits of doing broad targeting. Well, number one, you saw the amazing case studies at the beginning of this video, but number two, it provides much more stability inside of the ad account. We can run ads significantly longer than before. You know, we don't have ad fatigue like everyone else. Second thing is that we can scale a lot harder. It's been numerous times where we even 2X, 5X, even 10X ad spend with the current creatives we have now that's live in your account that are winners and able to scale significantly faster. And lastly, is it simplifies the ad account. There's no more guess and check. Was it the audience we targeted was wrong or was it the bad creative? Which one was the reason why we didn't see performance? Now it's just, hey, if the creative didn't work, the creative didn't work, we move on to the next, next one. Now, broad targeting objections. These are the most common objections I hear all the time because likely if you've been watching this YouTube channel, you've seen it a few times um, that I've talked about broad targeting. And if you're new to the channel, then guess what? Here's some of the common objections I get. It's a poor quality audience. This is false. Broad targeting, it's not like it's just showing ads in front of people that have no clue who you are and don't care about you at all. No, it's showing people who are most likely to convert based off what you're optimizing for. So if you're optimizing for purchases, it's going to give you purchases. If you're optimizing for ads to carts, it's going to give you to ads to carts. If you're optimizing for leads, it's going to optimize for leads. There's no difference in the quality of the audience and there's no difference in the wealth status of these customers. And you'll see in a second too why I'm saying wealth status. It's not a poor quality audience. It's simply removing the restrictions around Facebook to target people who are most likely to convert with that particular ad. It doesn't work for me. I understand. I'd say probably about nine out of 10 counts. We can jump right in, run broad targeting, and it crushes for us. There's maybe one account 10% of the time that doesn't. And all we have to do is that we have to rebuild the winning creatives because like my example with the wall art of people coming to me and I started getting served wall art ads after I made a purchase on another website for wall art. Same thing is happening to you. Your ads are only appealing right now to people who that are pretty much like scavenging at the bottom and fighting over the scraps. So your ads do a terrible job at converting a cold prospect. A cold prospect is how do we get an ad to convert someone into wanting wall art before they view 10 brands. That's our objective. Your ad probably is a 50% off this piece of wall art right here type of ad, which people don't really care about. So we build ads that make people want our product. Next one is I have a niched product. I get this one the most. People say it all the time, Nick, I'm running Legion and you know, I don't want a poor quality customer or poor quality lead. That's actually false. You know, we, we sell a $2,500 product with Legion and we get one out of 10 leads to convert on broad targeting, which is through Legion, that's phenomenal. You know, we get like a $350 CPA on a $2,500 product. So it's like over a 5x return on ad spend. I've had a student selling B2B to restaurants who absolutely crush it. Think about it, restaurant owners, literally targeting restaurant owners and restaurant managers with broad targeting and crushing it. I've personally ran agency ads for my agency to acquire leads of Shopify store owners doing 30K plus a month in revenue. Think about that one for a second. Shopify store owners who are doing $30,000 a month or more. Like, you know how many Shopify store owners there is? But then specifically 30K or more a month, significantly less. So I ran ads to acquire leads for that and getting those quality leads from there. Next one is I have mentors. I heard this from my, my mentor, Jeremy Haynes. Um, this came from him specifically. So uh, he was actually running broad targeting for a, um, a $50,000 offer. And he was acquiring investors for this $50,000 offer. Basically people would invest into this 50K offer, broad targeting. So niche product, poor quality audience, all false. It's you have bad ads if it doesn't work on broad targeting. Next one is I have a new ad account. And this one right here is probably one of the biggest ones as well. A lot of people give me, Nick, I don't have a lot of money yet to spend. Should I put it towards audiences or should I put it towards broad targeting? I always tell people broad targeting because you do not have the money to afford audiences yet. You don't have the money to blow yet. You need to spend all your money where it matters and that's testing and building winning ads. This is a brand new ad account right here. We're selling a supplement and this is our first ever $600 we spent on it and we found this winning ad right here. $75 cost for purchase, but this is like the lifetime. So like it, it performs way better on a short period of time and it's hitting like our target goals and stuff like that. This ad does phenomenal. Now, why does broad work so well? 
you might be asking yourself, like, what's the technology behind it? Like, what's, what's the reason I need to jump on this, Nick? Please tell me. And in order for me to do that is you need to understand how the algorithm works. So, hey, I know broad targeting is working well. I know like all these objections I have to it are like completely false. So how does it work? Like, Why are people jumping on it? Why are you like screaming at me, Nick, to do this? Okay, here you go. So where does Facebook do the targeting? Like, I think a lot of people still don't really fully know this. Some people say it's the campaign level. Some people say it's the ad set level. Some people say it's the ad level. Like where does Facebook do the targeting? Some people even say the pixel does the targeting. That's actually false too, okay? It's not the ad set level either. So it's not the campaign. It's not the ad set level. It's the ad level, okay? And it's not just the ad level. It's each ad has its own audience it targets. And just to show you an example right here, each ad creates its own audience. So like this blue box right here is the size of the audience. So like ad one appeals to this many people. Ad two appeals to way more people right here. Ad three appeals to a decent amount of people and ad four, you know, marginally smaller right there. So like ad number two can do a phenomenal job at spending a lot of money, whereas ad one can't do a good job. Why? Because it appeals to a certain amount of people. Every time you create an ad, Facebook creates an audience of people around it that resonate with that ad, people that want to see that ad. And how does Facebook do that? Well, when you create an ad basically on Facebook, Facebook is like thousands of data points when you create one Facebook ad. So some of y'all are watching like 10 or 12 at a time. Facebook pulls hundreds and thousands of data points from that ad. So like, for example, you know, this ad right here, weight loss, blue, pink, cereal, super collagen protein. It's just, it's, it doesn't, it pulls from a few different perspectives, mostly the creative itself, but body copy, headline, and creative. I'd say 80% lies in the creative itself. So if you want to improve your targeting, improve your creatives that resonate with your ideal customer. So in this particular scenario right here, tighten loose skin. So it's going after people who want to tighten loose skin, um, which is kind of can be kind of considered like weight loss, you know, maybe like beauty and health and things like that. It's also showing like pink, showing blue, it's showing a supplement. So it's definitely gonna be in the health and wellness space. And it's showing cereal as well, which I don't really know if that really puts anything perspective. So Facebook pulls all of these key things and it starts creating audiences based off of that ad. And when you launch an ad, Facebook puts it in front of, let's say a hundred people. Like the sample size is different. Like I don't really know the exact sample size, but Facebook does a sample. You know, it might be every person, for example, but Facebook puts it in front of a hundred people. These people stop, these people scroll, the scroll past it, just never stopped, boom. So guess what? So I'm putting more in front of these people. All right, these people hate it, these people love it. So we're gonna put it more like these people. Boom, these people hate it, these people love it, we're gonna keep putting it. So Facebook is consistently improving. Now, this is not learning active and learning limited. Facebook is always improving. Like even when your thing is saying active, it's still doing this. The ad's always improving over time. And this is just to further show proof that each ad has its own audience. Both of these ads are in the exact same ad set. Raw targeting, all those good goodies right there. And this particular ad, KJDC 47, it had $10,000 spent with $9,400 on male and $617 on female. So about 94% male, 60% or 6%, 94% and 6% on female. KGD 46 spent $11,000 with $7,600 spent on female. It like over 10 times more than the first one, right? So for the female side, why did it spend more? Because in 47, it had a male and 46 they had a female. Now we also know the male also improved and we also had like a decent amount more spend compared to like this one right here for the female. Why? Because, you know, it was a cute girl in a golf skirt, like just put it as human psychology. So we know men are gonna stop to see golf girl playing golf, just what we know. So this is where you really need to understand human psychology. What gets people to stop? It's the visual and it's the headline. And when I say headline, I'm talking about what's right here on the creative. So this needs to be emotion baiting and so does the image itself. What's gonna get people to stop? We wanna strike emotion and we wanna show visuals that's gonna grab their attention as well. Another example is your feed. You know, a lot of you guys are into gym, likely your whole Instagram reels or your TikTok reels or in, um, you know, gym stuff. You know, a lot of you guys are always clicking on like girls reels and stuff like that. Your whole reel is probably filled up with girls and stuff like that. I'm personally really big into boxing. So like all my reels are like boxing stuff like that. I actually have way more boxing stuff than, you know, like Facebook stuff just because I like to like watch YouTube videos and like mentors and stuff like that for that. But uh, just another example right there. 
there's no specific targeted options when you upload a organic piece of content. This allows you to hit your audience before everyone else, because now you're taking a piece of content and you're putting it in front of people before they're categorized as an interest. So this is people who are interested in like entrepreneurship stuff. We're going to put a piece of wall art in front of them because we think they're going to like it. We're not going to hit people who are looking at wall art, for example, where everyone else is like just trying to cater those people. And this also allows you to target more of your audience. So you're not going to be restricted by an interest or a lookalike as well. And just to give you a quick example real quick is this gray box right here is your whole market. All right. And this right here is your whole market. And this right here is your whole market. The blue circle is basically the audience you're targeting. So if I target broad, I can hit everyone in the blue circle. If I target an interest, I can only hit a small portion of people in my audience. You can see because just a little bit of overlap is what I can target in that blue market. And then look like right here, I can only target very small percentage of that blue circle. So that's the importance of that. So how do you target your audience with ads? So we understand now that the ad does all the targeting. How do you build ads that do the targeting? So you need to understand these things first. What do they desire? Where do you start the conversation at? How many products have they used before yours? And what are the what other characteristics are about my customer? So let's give me give you some examples. What do they desire? More money, six pack, girlfriend, creatives that convert, you know, scaling their Shopify store. What do they desire? This is what they want. Now, where do you start the conversation at? So do they know the product? What the product is they're looking for? So for example, like you may be looking for Facebook ads that convert, whereas do you do they know the problem they're trying to solve? And your original problem might be, you know, people like your market might have the problem of bad Facebook ad performance. What's the solution? Solution is Facebook ads that convert. So they're looking for Facebook ads that convert. So that's that's the difference right there. Th these people are searching for a solution they already know of, and these people are just have a problem right now. They don't know what the solution is yet. So we need to start the conversation based off the thoughts in their head. And the next one is how many products have they used before yours? So let me give you an example really quick. I'm really big into pre-workout and stuff like that, but I know a lot of people too that they've tried pre-workout and they hated it and will never use it again because of the jitters. Due to that, now they're looking for a pre-workout without the jitters. So if I wanted to target people who've tried pre-workout before and hated it due to the jitters, I would say, hey, we have a pre-workout now without the jitters. And that's when you get in front of those types of people. And the next one is, what are other characteristics about my customer? So for example, some people say, uh, people into fitness, it's false. So men who are 25 years old, who are into the gym, they do bodybuilding movements. So a specific type of workout and are looking to build a lean muscular physique. They value minimalism and hate having lots of things. They're working hard to become a better version of themselves between physical, mental, and money. So it's kind of like, uh, let's say like Alpha Elite, for example, what I'm wearing right now. This is kind of like their kind of like brand description of like their perfect client. If I was just kind of giving a guess. Now, let me give you some examples really quick before we end this video. So number one, here's one of our clients. And we just simply right here, we are calling out uh, people who are looking for a gift for their birthday. And we're just showing the product. Looking for the perfect gift for their birthday. Boom. Here's the product. Here's another one right here where uh, we showcase and we start off with the hook called this is for my girlies who need a girl night soon. So girls who are actively looking for a girl's night, we're positioning this product into front of these girls. And what's happening is they're clicking on it and they're watching it because it's like, oh, I want a girl's night soon. Yes. And then they're clicking and watching on it. And Facebook is continuously getting better at targeting. Again, the creative does 80% of the power of targeting and conversions. The body copy, about 20%. This is the only ad I'll show you that the copy is doing a little bit more power. And that's just because this creative right here does really like, there's really nothing that's being said. Here, we are targeting men and we're just simply showing them. It's just a short video of just like a guy showing off the clothing and stuff like that. And we're just showcasing the product lifestyle and men who are uh, basically attracted to that type of lifestyle. That's the people we're targeting. This right here, we're targeting people who struggle with inflammation. We're also saying the easiest way to fight inflammation. So we're also implying the fact that they've tried other ways and this is the easiest way. And then last one, this is a legion right here. And we're targeting people on Medicare, which those people, if you don't know, if like you're out at the USA, that's just like uh, something like a type of health insurance for like older demographics. So we're targeting people on Medicare. How am I doing that? Because I'm literally putting that as the hook. All of these examples do a great job at converting someone who's cold into a customer. That's what you need to keep in mind. So 
how can you see what Facebook is targeting with each ad? Also too, just to put some things in perspective really quick for you guys. Um, so like another thing I mentioned in this video is that like retargeting, for example, I don't do retargeting. So what I do is I look at like frequency and CPM. If we look at like the top spending ads for this particular account right here, we can see our Black Friday ads in this campaign I only spent $16,000 relative to our main ad set, 25,000. And they had a much higher frequency because they were targeting more people in that bottom of funnel, middle funnel style, because that's what they made. We uploaded Black Friday ads to a broad audience, but yet Facebook still knew who to target due to those particular ads that were put, put in there. And then here's also another example really quick. Some ads will do good on a cold audience and get more spend. So like 34,805 spent on DHJ 15, we literally spent $34,000 for a 1.69 frequency. So a really good ad at getting cold people into the funnel. Frequency is still a little high. We're only getting about 30% new people into the funnel. You know, about 70% is almost retargeting, but uh, it's still converting well in our KPIs. And this particular ad right here, it's 34,000 spent with a $37 CPL, much higher frequency and a much higher CPM, but we're also targeting a very specific group of people. So the audience size is much smaller and the total amount of people that resonate with this ad right here. And we can see that because the CPM is a lot higher and because the frequency is a lot higher. So due to this, I know that, Hey, the audience is significantly smaller. So we're really hammering this audience, but it's hitting all of our goals from a CPA and CPL perspective. So I don't really sweat it. And yeah, as I mentioned before, I don't do a dedicated retargeting campaign. I put all my retargeting ads on broad with all my other ads. And if you're looking at how to run Facebook ads 2024, if you're looking at like my campaign structure, how to run the account or anything like that, make sure to watch this video right here. And if you have any questions, drop them below. But yeah, guys, that's how you target your ideal audience with Facebook ads in 2024 with Facebook. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, hit that subscribe button for new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And if you're interested in me kind of running your ads, click the link below, have Nick Terrio run your ads. And if you're interested in me actually mentoring you and coaching you, click the link below to have Nick Terrio mentor you. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out.